What is up everybody and welcome. In today's video we are going to be taking a very sweet look at this Rob Carter custom tech. This is the first uh, Rob Carter knife, sort of only Rob Carter knife at least, we did have the BBM, uh, to come across the table and I am super, super stoked to go ahead and jump into this one with you guys. So of course this knife is on loan as part of that uh, huge package that came from the man, the myth, the legend. Heels with Steel. His name is Mike, and he has an amazing collection. Go check him out on Instagram. Uh, you will not be disappointed. Now, jumping into this knife, uh, it's kind of an interesting one because this is a lot like uh, that Gavco that I have, where in that video, you know, I sort of talked about the fact that the knife had a lot of features which I normally wouldn't be particularly excited about. Um, you know, I'm a pretty picky collector, and so it's got like thumb studs and sort of um, some design choices that I normally wouldn't jump at. Uh, and similarly, this knife has sort of a, a set of features which by themselves on any other knife would sort of be a deterrent for me. Uh, yet on this knife, everything's just done sort of so well as a collective theme um, and as a, a the, the knife itself as one collective piece uh, is, is super sweet. So, um, getting started here, I want to talk about the sort of just what this knife is exactly. So what we're looking at is the custom tech, which is a mid tech, uh, available via Rob Carter. So he obviously has done the design. It's sort of like the F 16 design, although it's like a little bit smaller, um, and a little less, uh, I guess you could say a little less detailed. Um, it's sort of a simple frame lock from the, I mean, as the long and short of it, but it's just, it's so much more than that. So um, what you're getting here is essentially a mid-tech insofar as the frame is is water jet cut or CNC'd, um, as well as the parts, you know, the blade and everything. Um, and those parts are getting sent to Rob and then he is assembling the knife and then also doing all of the exotic material uh, additions. So what you can see here is actually a Rob Mascus clip, sole authorship Rob Mascus, uh, as well as around these pivot collars. And finally in the thumb disc. Just a little bit of Zerk sprinkled in there as well. So even though you're looking at sort of a mid-tech knife only in really in terms of uh, by definition, what you're ultimately getting, I think, is pretty much a custom knife. Uh, you have the sole authorship exotic material, which is really special. Um, I don't know. I feel like that's something that I didn't give a lot of credence to not too long ago. But the more I think about it, uh, the more impressive that is to me because at the end of the day, uh, if you think about knife making as a as a tradition, um, let's take a, for example a modern take on uh, old school knife making, which might be the show Forged in Fire. I know a lot of knife guys have at least seen that show. Whether or not you like it is certainly up to your personal opinion. But if you just take that show sort of at face value, you know the guys talk about themselves as knife makers, but what they really are, you know, are blacksmiths, um, and so. I just, I find it really interesting when a modern knife maker can take modern materials uh, and sort of implement that sole authorship aspect of it because I just feel like that, um, I, I just feel like it's really a really special feature. I feel like we don't see it enough in the market. Um, you know, there's definitely a few makers that are sort of known for doing it, but outside of those couple of household names, uh, you really don't have a lot of people doing sole authorship, uh, especially with the, the exotic materials. You know, I know a lot of knife makers will try to heat treat their own blades and stuff to have a little bit of that sort of, uh, hands-on, uh, effect in terms of the actual metallurgy involved with the knife and everything, but, uh, I don't know. There's something about that sole authorship exotic material that really takes it to the next level for me. So these knives, I'm given to understand, hover about a thousand bucks, give or take a hundred in either direction. I'm not really sure. And whenever I'm looking at a knife, I'm always trying to sort of evaluate, you know, is this worth the asking price? Because there's a lot of good knives out there uh, where the asking price is too much and there's a lot of um, 
Oh, sorry. There's a lot of good knives out there where the asking price is, you know, pretty reasonable, and a lot of bad knives out there where it's uh, definitely way too much. So I always try to sort of evaluate uh, a knife based on uh, what the market is saying that it's worth. And at roughly a thousand bucks, I 100% rec recommend this knife. And it's because I feel like with this knife, you're getting a total package uh, that you don't get with a lot of knives, especially knives that could be considered a mid-tech. Um, I'd say the only people that are doing mid-techs to uh, this sort of degree of finish work and everything right now, uh, like actively, is probably just Todd Bag knives. Um, you know, the, the amount of handwork and detail that they put into their mid, mid techs is absolutely uh, astounding compared to what other companies are doing. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely see this not being perhaps too, too far off of an Olamic, um, at least in the sense of just sort of, you know, it's a, it's a machine cut frame lock. Um, and while it does have some, some nice uh, touches of, you know, hand worked exotic material and everything, and, you know, you've got the uh, beautiful little polished edge speed holes there, while it does have those details, um, this knife, I really think, is the is a step above the Olamic. Sorry, it's like it's been super hot in my uh, in my house, and my hands are drenched, and it's pretty gross. I'm sorry, my, my hands are definitely sweaty, but um, yeah. So I feel like this knife just t definitely takes it a step above, if not only for the sole authorship material, but just also sort of in the way that the knife functions. So uh, the next thing that I really want to talk about this knife talk about on this knife is the bearing feel and the sort of fidget factor so this knife is on bearings and while it's not like insanely drop shut or particularly free fall uh, or anything like that it has a smoothness uh, which i've only really characterized this way on a few other knives particularly thorburns insofar as uh, if i were to close my eyes i can't really tell at what point um, in sort of the closing state the blade is um, the bearing feel is just so incredibly smooth uh, there's really no feedback transferred through the actual frame and I feel like when you deal with frame locks you're almost um, sort of guaranteed to have a little bit of feeling travel through the frame and liner locks typically do a better job of uh, dispersing that that feeling that um, that vibration or that feeling that you can get through the handle. Uh, this knife is a frame lock that has completely done away with that. The bearing feel on here is just so incredibly smooth and quiet. It doesn't make any sound. Uh, it doesn't uh, get stuck anywhere. Um, it's just, it's always the same smoothness. So it just really has this consistency uh, that's absolutely respectable and absolutely fantastic. I feel like a lot of knives... Um, you know, might even have like more free actions or, or even better actions. Um, but in many cases, their consistency is, is significantly lower. And I'm, I've kind of at, gotten to the point in collecting where, you know, I've tried all the Grimsmoe stuff um, and all that super free dropping stuff. And while I really appreciate that, what I've ultimately come to appreciate even more is consistency. Um, and that's sort of like the difference between a Grimsmo Norseman uh, uh, and a Shirogorov Russian flipping Tonto. You know, when I flip that Russian flipping Tonto every single time, it's going to be the same. That Norseman after the 50th flip, um, you know, that detent ball is going to start to dry up. And with, with it being flat face detent and everything, I don't know. You just start to notice that a little bit sooner. So I just have to say the consistency uh, with which this action acts is, uh, is absolutely fantastic. And then sort of on to the fidget factor, which sort of brings in the next point, which is the thumb disc. The fidget factor on this knife is delightful. Uh, I really want to own one of these knives for myself because it's one that I reach for quite frequently to pick up and play with. It's just got that great smoothness. Um, another thing is even though it's a frame lock, we are looking at a very thick frame. And what you can see here is that the uh, chamfering, I'm just trying to, this is very bright. There we go. The chamfering in here you can see is substantial. Uh, these sort of scalloped cutaways for your thumb. They are on both sides. They grant uh, lots of access for your thumb to get in there. They're very smooth, and for the thickness of this lock bar, uh, you can see the relief cut's actually quite thin. Uh, and the lock bar itself is, while certainly strong enough to uh, provide excellent lockup, 
Uh, it's really easy to disengage. It doesn't fight you at all. It's one of the most comfortable disengagements I've ever felt on a knife. Your thumb, uh, the meat of your thumb slips in there very well, catches the scalloping very well, uh, and it's just a very easy, comfortable, quiet, uh, just very uh, sophisticated um, and and wonderful deployment. I just, I like to, uh, sorry, not deployment, um, disengagement, rather, of the lock bar. This is one of the probably nicest disengagements I've ever experienced on any knife. Um, you can see just how sort of controlled it is, uh, and just very comfortable. Not a hot spot to be found. And I gotta say, again, just fidgeting this one, fidgeting with this one's absolutely great. Your fingers sort of rest up against the uh, three-dimensional pivot, which you can see is rounded off, um, and so your fingers just sort of rest up against them, uh, and sort of the weight of the knife is able to fall into your fingers, and you can sort of play with it and let it drift as uh, lightly or as uh, with as much of a shake as you prefer. So. Um, the thumb disc, when Frank, uh, a.k.a. Dr. Frunky, of course, the man, he uh, he did a video on this knife shortly before I actually received it on loan, uh, and he discussed the fact that, you know, he's really impartial uh, or, or, or sort of not a big fan of thumb discs, as I feel like many in the community are. Um, I'm not a fan of them either. This sort of goes back to what I talked about at the beginning of the video regarding this knife having features that normally would turn me away from a knife. The other just being, you know, that it's a frame lock and everything. But um, when I got the knife, so, so Frank in his video said that even though he doesn't like thumb discs, that this one wasn't a problem for him. So when I got the knife, I really tested it out. And I messaged Frank and I said the same thing. I said, you know, you're right. Thumb discs aren't normally a problem, but on this knife, I happen to like it. Although, a few weeks have passed since then, and I flipped the knife a lot more, and I've sort of developed a furthered opinion on the matter, which is that the disc uh, is both a great and not great choice for a couple of reasons. So let's go ahead and jump into them. Uh, the reason that I think the disc is a good choice is because uh, this knife is a pretty small and tight package, and while you can fit a thumb stud on a knife like this, uh, one, they would have to stick out pretty far, uh, further than the thumb disc, I think, because they would be sat further into the blade. Um, so let's try to show you. So, like, if you were to put the thumb disc, or sorry, the thumb stud, like, right here, where you would naturally, uh, place it, it's going to be tucked up pretty close against to the frame. Now, if you can see, looking directly here, the frame extends further than the thumb disc on both sides. Now, not by much, but enough of an amount uh, that this thumb disc doesn't really get caught on too much or anything like that, and it just doesn't really stick out too far when the knife is open. You do, of course, have a pretty uh, thick, stout little blade here, and so the thumb disc fits pretty neatly. If you were to trade that out for a thumb stud, uh, because you would be moving the contact point for your finger closer to the e uh, edge of the frame here, to get your finger in there and gain leverage, you would have to increase the distance of the thumb stud off of the blade. Therefore, the thumb studs would have to stick out as far as, or perhaps even further than, slightly further than, the edge of the frame, so that you could put your thumb here against the edge of the frame, and as you push out, it would make contact with the tip of that thumb stud, rather than simply slipping over top of it. So, the idea of a thumb disc as a choice on this particular design because he took the f16 model and sort of shrunk it down a little bit i don't know how accurate that is either this might just be the regular size but i'm pretty sure uh, this is almost definitely smaller but um so th those are a few reasons where i can see the sort of design choice being in place for the thumb disc and i can respect that i kind of like having the thumb disc instead of the studs in that regard however um when you're fidgeting with the knife, you sort of have to be unnatural with a disc to get it to flip well. Uh, and it's not something that I particularly dislike, but I feel like when you look at the thumb disc, it would make sense that you would get behind it and like push outward because that's sort of the greatest contact point and where it feels most comfortable. But if I do that, 
a lot of times I end up pushing too hard into the blade and it gets stuck. Now, if I really flick it and make sure that my thumb comes out of the way, you can see that that's enough to deploy the knife. And that's because this detent is very well tuned. However, most of the time when I push like that, my uh, the meat of my finger gets too deep in here. I end up putting pressure on the blade and then my thumb falls flat on the blade and it doesn't deploy. I really have to get my thumb out of the way to uh, sort of flick it outward and be successful. Now, having said that, if I do bring my finger back and sort of push up into the thumb disc at this corner, it feels sharp. It's not the most comfortable thing, uh, but it does function a little bit more easily. I don't quite have to move my thumb as much. And so you can see that's e easily the uh, more effective way to deploy, but it just doesn't feel very natural pushing your thumb into the corner edge of this thumb disc. Now the same thing is true on the reverse side. You can see my uh, fingernail on my mid middle finger naturally makes contact right with that point. So every time I flip this with the middle finger flick, which is my preferred method of deployment, my fingernail is only making contact with this very tiny edge right there. And obviously it works, right? So again, I really, um, I'm sort of beating around the bush here because like, I don't want anybody to think that it does a disservice to the knife because I actually think that in this case, the thumb disc was the best choice for this design. Uh, it functions very well. Uh, it's right where I sort of need my contact points to be. But again, it just doesn't quite feel natural. And I hope that you all can understand what I mean by that. Uh, it just feels more natural to hit a thumb stud. It's rounded. It feels comfortable against your finger. Um, and this one, it's just a little odd. But again, look, I mean, I don't have any problems with it. It's very easy to fidget with. Uh, I just, God, I really enjoy it. It's got a detent that is absolutely uh, tuned to perfection. It's just the right amount of lock bar pressure, just the right amount of detent to break, just the right amount of consistency, just the right amount of smoothness, and I absolutely freaking love this knife. And I have to say, guys, this knife is a really great package for somebody that's looking to invest, um, you know, maybe into their first expensive knife, and they want something that they, that will serve them very well as a daily user, right? Something that they can uh, feel comfortable and 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 equipped uh, to use to open packages and to cut paper um, and to maybe you know maybe you wouldn't necessarily like take it camping, but that you sort of could and you could use it in conjunction with a fixed blade and stuff. Um, if you're looking for that, like so maybe other knives that you're looking at are perhaps Chris Reeve knives, Holt Blade Works, um, or maybe, you know, a step up, maybe a high-end Shirogorov, like a Hattie R or an F3R or something like that. Um, if this is sort of the area that you're looking in, you want something that's, you know, uh, machine made so that it's a little bit more affordable but definitely has some custom touches that really make it a special knife um, but again also something where you can only you only have the one um, and it's sort of meant to serve you in all purposes whether it be dressing up for a wedding or uh, you know again breaking down a couple boxes in your backyard or something this knife is one of those knives I just really feel like it checks every box um, it's got great collectability with that sole authorship uh, exotic material, which I think is gorgeous. I think it has an absolutely fantastic design. Some of the best fidget factor of any knife that I've had, especially a frame lock. Um, and for a non-flipper, it's absolutely super, super enjoyable. Uh, and so I really just think this is going to be a great knife that could serve a lot of people. And uh, if you have one of these offered to you guys and you sort of uh, you know like the aesthetics and everything, I cannot recommend it enough. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. The Rob Carter Custom tech of course i have beautiful pictures of this knife on my instagram at tavarish works go check out the owner at heels with steel on instagram as well and of course if you guys like to email me for any reason whatsoever you can do so by reaching me at tavarishworks at gmail.com thanks so much for watching guys and i will see you next time